Hi there, my name is Flavia Marcello and I'm an Associate Professor of Architectural History at Swinburne University in Melbourne. I'm here to tell you a little bit about some of the research we've been doing at the Centre for Transformative Media Technologies, where we're taking architectural history out of the pages of the books and into the realm of lived experience. So when you're ready, we're going to travel back in time to Italy during the fascist period. We're in Milan. It's 1939. You've been living under a fascist regime for oh, about 17 years now. Now, at the beginning, it wasn't so bad because Italy had weathered the Great Depression quite well thanks to the socio-economic reforms put into place by the fascist party. But lately, things have started to go a little bit downhill. There were anti-Semitic policies being rolled out across the country thanks to fascist Italy's alliance with Nazi Germany. There was the Second World War was in full swing. And you started to think that maybe the price of personal freedom was getting a little bit too high to pay. Here we are in the Parco Sempione, the home of the Milan Triennale and the Palazzo dell'Arte. This building had become a major hub for exhibitions that showcased the best of fascist society. We had the 1933 Milan Triennale, the 1934 exhibition for aeronautics, the 1936 Triennale and then a great big exhibition honouring one of the heroes of Renaissance Italy, Leonardo da Vinci. In fact, it was so successful by 1936 that they had to build a whole new building next to it. This new pavilion and an entry pavilion was designed by Giuseppe Pagano. But unfortunately, they're no more because they were damaged during the Second World War and had to be torn down. But we can go and visit them virtually right now. So here we are at the entrance of the exhibition of mass production. It's the 1943 Annale was nowhere near as extensive or glamorous as the 1933 or 1936 versions, but that's understandable given the social, economic and political climate of the time. It's 1939, the world is at war and the consent that the fascist regime had worked so hard to build over the last years was slipping through its fingers. This exhibition was designed by the same architect who designed the building, Giuseppe Pagano. Now he's a rather interesting character. He was born in 1896 in the town of Podic on the Istrian Peninsula, which at the time was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. He joined the fascist party quite early and was fully convinced that architecture could be a positive force for social change and the fascist regime was the regime that would make that social change happen. He wasn't just an architect, he designed exhibitions, furniture, and he was also the editor of the influential design journal Casabella. Now let's go and explore the exhibition of mass production. Pagano didn't know this at the time, but what he essentially did with this exhibition was herald the birth of industrial design as a discipline. He had experimented with showing industrial products as if they were work of art at the Paris Expo of 1937. But here at the exhibition of mass production, he took it to a whole new level. Visitors came to this exhibition and walked away with an education about the marvels of industrial production. And some people were just thrilled to see their very first real telephone. There were exhibits here from famous Italian companies like Olivetti, Fiat and Ducati. Even this armature that you can see holding the exhibition together was mass produced. It was a series of metal, metal tubes that could be put together and taken down quickly and easily. They held up these glass cases that showed the exhibits but also acted as room dividers controlling the flow of people through the exhibition. So now I'll leave you to enjoy your own personal tour of the exhibition of mass production and don't forget to check out our Saturday House for Newlyweds from the Milan Triennale of 1933 and the Italian Pavilion at the Paris Expo of 1937. Bye bye.